brothers and sisters. As always, we are grateful to the one true living God for his divine wisdom and his perfect and infallible understanding of all things. We thank him for being the true sender and true teacher of holy prophets and holy apostles all of our ministers and to the millions of viewers that are watching. We still have a wonderful hangover from the, our convocation from last week. It was a tremendous blessing to see so many several thousands of souls gathered under one roof, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. We came a long way from 12 to 13 people, didn't we? Yes. That's a blessing God knows. Last week alone, just in the convention alone, 143 souls were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, so we are thankful. Um, several backsliders came back. And we are glad about that. Always good to see people come back to God. And if God spare your life to come back to him, don't take it for granted. Nor should we abuse his mercy. I know the Bible said that God's mercy endureth forever, but let us remember forever is an indefinite period of time. You know, the Bible said the earth abided forever, but then you have forever and ever, which are two different things. The Bible said the earth abided forever. That means a certain period of time that the world will be here. And then when that time has expired, that forever is over. For it is written that heaven and earth shall pass away. But when you say forever and ever, well, now you're stepping out of time into eternity. So it's a beautiful thing to meet. I met so many new brothers and sisters by the hundreds that I had the chance to meet face to face, but yet they see us every week, if not every day, over the air. They came from Norway, Sweden, different parts of Australia and different parts of Canada. Some was there from the United Arab Emirates, some was there from Ethiopia, from Kenya, from the Congo, nice. from so many areas of Africa, from the Sudan, uh, other parts of India. I mean, it was just so many that I had the chance to meet. And it was a beautiful looking flower garden. God's creation. How God brings people in of every nation. And that's what God's purpose is. He declared all nations shall flow unto it. Coming to the house of the God of Jacob so they can be taught God ways. So we can walk in God's path. Out of Zion, it is written, shall go forth the law. But the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Uh, so it's a blessing. Uh, the authorities... Somebody contact the authorities uh, when the black Hebrew Israelites came here at our campus. And I was here early because I had business to attend to and the authorities reached out to me. Captain talked to me and introduced himself and uh, told me that he wouldn't tell me who reached out to him. It could have been neighbors. Could have been folks in church. I asked him, well, who reached out to you? He said, we can't give out that information. He said, but we were reached. He said, we were even told to go on YouTube <laughs> if we want to see the evidence of what happened. He said, Pastor Jennings, we went on YouTube. We saw what happened. Do you want the press charges? <laughs> I said, on what grounds? They was on the sidewalk. We don't own the sidewalk. He said, you're right. 
But this is where they made a legal mistake. You were actually having worship. And they violated law by disturbing religious worship. He said if you wasn't in there, he said if you were not in the building and they were just demonstrating, it would be something different. He said, but because you were having religious worship and practicing your religious right, you can actually sue them and you can actually have them prosecuted. So I listened. I'm trying to get brothers out of jail. I am. And when I say I'm trying to get brothers out of jail, I'm talking about every race under the sun. I'm trying to get you out. I'm not trying to put you in. And I'm pretty sure they're watching today. But uh, to the Hebrew Israelites, you supplied the law with evidence by you posting your own video. And the captain reached out to me based upon what you post. We were in service. And I know he's not making it up because he made a reference to whoever the gentleman was walking around the grounds with the camera. He said they really had a foul mouth. They were cussing. He asked me, what did you do to them? I said, I preach what's in the Bible. And so I said, I preach what's in the Bible. He said, well, I'm, I never got involved in, relig involved in religious discrepancies. I said, I preach that everyone should obey God, and I don't care what color you are. He said, well, several of us here at this precinct, we watch you. So we are very familiar with what you stand for. He said, at the same time, we are very familiar with the Hebrew Israelites also. And I said to him, I said, yes, any organization where everyone are people of color, the law always infiltrate that organization. He got quiet when I said that. That's just a historical fact. Any organization, whether it's Muslim, so-called Christian, so-called Hebrew Israelite, so-called black activists, I don't care what organization it is, but if that organization is people of color, the government always, have always, infiltrated that organization. That's true. And like in the earlier days of the truth of God, they thought we were a black organization. Right. Even though they saw white brothers and Hispanic brothers and Asian, because I am, in their eyes, a black outspoken, and as they label me, militant minister. The FBI have sent men here. And uh, what initiated it was a caller who called the FBI on me because I preached against racism. And the caller got so upset, he called in, called the FBI, and the FBI said, oh, we already know about him. We already have some of our men down there already. And some of them got convicted. And I remember this from the preaching of the gospel. Came in my office and confessed to me who they were because they went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. They got convicted. So this is what I mean how no human, when I say no human can beat God, I mean that. No human. What you plan for bad, God will reverse it and make it good for the church. So he asked me over and over, did I want to press charges? And he explained to me what grounds. I asked him a question. 
I say, tell me, sir, based upon the uh, statistics of information that the law has, how many people of color fill the prisons of America? He said, between 87 and 93 percent. I said, between 87 and 93 percent. I said, hmm. He said, uh, then he made a sarcastic mark, remark that rubbed me the wrong way. I say, I'm not trying to fill the prisons. I'm trying to diminish the amount of prisoners. And then he said sarcastically and laughed, he said, well, prison is good business. And he laughed when he said it. Now, the Hebrew Israelites and the truth of God, we disagree without a shadow of a doubt. That's right. Amen. If this gentleman would not have laughed as if I'm going to be used as a pawn uh -huh. to further the business of the prison system, I am trying to get black, white, brown, yellow, red of every ethnic group, not just from the prison, system, prison, prison systems of the world, but to liberate their mind, to change their way of thinking. And for your way of thinking to change, your mind got to change, and for your mind truly change, you need God. Change the way you think. And if God changed the way you think, he'll change the way you feel. So I said to him, I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to press charges. I said, but if any of our members feel threatened, because no one should come to church and feel threatened by anybody on the outside, right. whether here in Philadelphia or any of the temples around the world. Amen. So to all the first churches of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world, pay attention to what I'm saying. Uh -huh. If any organization, whether it's black, Hebrew, Israelites, or anybody, I don't care who it is, come on the outside of any of the temples, if any of the brothers are able to record them, fine. Send us the recording, date it, log it, make a notation. But if any of the members start to feel threatened, uh -huh. then legal actions will be taking place. <laughs> Me personally, I didn't feel threatened, but the church is not one member, but many. Reason why I didn't feel threatened because I feel I've been threatened so much until I'm used to it. I've been threatened by the FBI. I've been threatened by the government. I've been threatened by uh, so many activists. I've been threatened by all kind of organizations. Me, Jesus said he was acquainted with grief. I'm acquainted with threats. I'm just not phased by it. Uh, so, they got a hold of the uh, video and they said they are studying it, studying the video and they said, well, we will get back to you. I said, fine, you can do that. I said, but at this time, I, I don't want to prosecute them. And uh, this is where we are. The word of God is the best prosecutor. So the Bible says you have an advocate with the Father. Now I have a few letters that I want to dive into. We got thousands of letters to catch up on and I don't have time to 
just read them over the air. But letters are coming in in reference. The people are thankful about the convention and letters are coming in of people who saw the incident over the air. Muslims have wrote me. Ex-FOI men have wrote me. Uh, Jews from other synagogues yeah. have wrote in. Uh, and believe it or not, some from the black Hebrew Israelites who were here, they said they were here, I don't know, have wrote in and have staked their case, and it was interesting. And uh, We're going to read a few of the letters, and this is not a hoax. I get thousands of letters. I remember one man uh, sent a letter and said, I wrote it myself. <laughs> all these people write me from all the world, from around the world, all of a sudden I'm so bored I got to write it myself. <laughs> uh, also to my viewers in the state of Oklahoma, you that have reached out to us, I got your letters. Uh, God willing, we will be opening up the temple in uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, or in other areas of Oklahoma. All of you that came to the former yeah. First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ in Oklahoma, I say former because that's not the First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you go, if, if, if you went there as a result of the broadcast, and I say I don't have no respect to person, I don't. Pack up and get out of there right away. That's right. So you don't end up being duped and lied to thinking if you go to Puerto Rico, salvation is there. That's not the message of God that the Lord going to bomb America in 2026 with a nuclear warhead and wipe out the entire country. Pastor Jenny, you don't know what's going to happen in 2026. I know America ain't going to disappear in 2026. That I do know. The reason why I know it, because the vision that God gave me go past 2026. Go past that. And, uh, and I'm glad I do. Amen. We have plenty more churches to build, business to establish for the church, so them that are unemployed can be employed. And I'm telling you, here, here, here. Here now, 2026 shall be here. You can think I'm arrogant. You can think I'm beside myself. Only one beside me is Williams. <laughs> Amen. Nice. But uh, that prophecy did not come from God. Amen. It was on free will. For you that have drained your bank account and yeah. selling your land and giving a portion of the money to the minister or to that church, get your money back. That's right. It is not first church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even if the sign is on the building, demand your money back. Yeah. You see, I don't have no respect to person. That's right. If you try to duke and con people in the name of Jesus Christ or in the name of First Church, uh -huh. then I'm going to open up all these cans of whoop scripture. There's a misrepresentation of God and the church. Are you getting what I'm telling? All right, come on, Moretti. Let's get these letters out the way. Dan, the man, I have him in another location. And I... Uh, now, leave, leave it there, brother. What you know? Where you going? <laughs> Touch not. <laughs> Handle not. Hey, Amen. All right, we're ready. Let's go to work. Let's see what you have now. This letter, this letter comes from Nolan Clark. Greetings. Is Paul boasting in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and at verse 18 that the Spirit? That's what the letter says. All right, that's a very good question. Let's get uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Begin at verse uh, 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we're at the 17th verse. Listen. But thou verily 
givest thanks well. Yeah. But the other is not edified. You know, I believe, I believe it's just the chapter that Paul's out of my speaking in tongue in the order of the Holy Ghost. That's right. And uh, God just gave Paul a gift that many people don't have. Right. And that was speaking in tongue much. Right. All right, listen now. 1 Corinthians 14, we're at verse 18. Yes. I thank my God. I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than you all. I speak in tongue more than you all. Yet in the church. In the church. I had rather speak five words with my understanding. Paul wasn't boasting. He was glorifying God. You know, one scripture, Paul said, you are glorifying God in me. In me. That's right. So Paul was glorifying God over the fact how he speak in tongue much. More than you all. More than all of them. Now, that's twofold. Not only did he speak in tongue much in the spirit, but also he speak in diverse tongues naturally. That's right. He spoke various different languages. He can go into a location and uh, speak that language which caused those that was listening to him to give them more attendance. That's right. Uh, but in the spirit, he spoke much and natural. He also spoke much. But notice what Paul says, and I believe in verse 19. At verse 19. That's what? Yet in the church. In the church. I had rather speak five I words. I had rather speak five words. With my understanding. And understand what I'm saying. That by my voice. That by my voice. I might teach others also. In other words, speaking in a language where people cannot understand don't help nobody. That's right. So he come along and say, I'd rather speak five words. With my understanding. In other words, you know, many preachers get up and get up one, two, three, and four, and five hours hollering. Yeah. No one understand nothing by the time they got up and sat down. That's right. So what profit was it? That's right. Fifteen minutes of truth and clarity and understanding had more value yes. than one, two, three hours of hollering and grunting like a pig to the slaughter. That's right. Get what I'm telling you now. So the message must be clear. Even though it is written, one must have a divine ability to break down, to interpret, to dissect, to open up, That's it. to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, to be able to understand the letter. And then he got to have the spirit of God to open up and explain the letter. That's right. That there is no contradiction and the folks can understand the intentions of God. That's it. Eh? That's right. All right. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words yeah. with my understanding. With my understanding. That by my voice, that I might teach my others voice, also. I may do what? I might teach I others also. I may teach others also. Then, that all of that? Oh, it's a little bit more. All right, come on. Then 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Oh. Hmm. That's it. Speak five words is better. That's right. In other words, a few words with understanding yes. outweigh a bunch of lip that that's don't right. make sense. That's right. That, that, that's plainly put. That, that's plain. All right, Moretti, next letter. This comes from Alfonso Turner. Pastor, I am sorry about asking you this, but I read out of the King James Version Bible. I told that it was a white man, but I know it is black. I have someone telling me different. I know it don't matter, but I need clarification for myself. I'm sorry to ask something like this. Any help will be helpful. Thank you. Keep doing what you are doing. Give me the book of Galatians, either Jew or Greek. Amen. And uh, God also give me St. John 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. Give me St. John 1 and 1 first. Amen. Now, I don't know what color King James was. I never <laughs> met him. That's right. I never met King James or Prince James. I don't know. That's His right. color have no relevance. For years, for years, for years, people have said that a bunch of Europeans got together and wrote the Bible. That's right. And there are other groups that says, no, all the blacks wrote the Bible. <laughs> Again, you get into the black and white argument. Right. Yeah. This is what should be your interest. The Bible says this. All scripture is given by inspiration Glory of God. God. I want you to hear this now. Amen. Give chapter and verse for this. Amen. Listen, come on now. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Follow me. And we're at verse 16. What is it? All scripture. All. Notice the scriptures are not called white scriptures. No. no. It's not called black scriptures. No. It's just called scriptures. Scripture. Jesus said, search the scriptures. That's right. Jesus said the error because they didn't know the scripture. That's it. The Bible said whatsoever things are written a full time are written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures get color out of it. That's yeah. right. Get me? That's it. When you get caught up in color 
then uh, the devil blind you, just like the Europeans. That's right. For years, the Europeans threw color over the Bible and made the whole Bible white and right. used it as a tool to suppress people of color all through history. That's right. That's what they did. That's why they used images. White Jesus, white Moses, white Mary, white Martha. That's right. That's it. When they come up with the Trinitarian doctrine, they got God white, and they make God look like an old man. That's it. Long gray hair, long gray beard. And then they make the Son of God white, a little pudgy, SpongeBob-looking need baby with blonde, little curly hair and blue eyes. Right. And then they make the dove white, which is supposed to be the Holy Ghost. That's right. They got all the angels, all the hosts of heaven white. So what happened years later? Men of color retaliated by making all heaven black. That's right. All heaven. I want the world to get out of the black, white, and yellow, and brown, and just get into God. That's it. That's right. Glory to God. All scripture. You hear the Bible talking. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Don't you 16. know Jesus sent his apostles to out everywhere. Everywhere. That's right. Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. The apostles went everywhere. Everywhere. He said, preach the gospel to everyone. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Do you hear this? In Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptizing them in Go the teach name all of the Father. He said, preach the gospel to every creature. That's right. To every creature. Right. Black man is a creature. That's right. So the white man is a creature. That's right. The brown man is a creature. Go ye into yeah. all the world. Listen at this now. St. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. Go ye into all the world. That's what God's, that's what we're doing. That's right. See? Hallelujah. I don't just sit around America. No, no. Oh, no. God is pulling people from all around the world. That's right. And it's, it's a beautiful sight too, brother. Oh, yes. Go ye into all the world. Into all the world. And preach and the gospel. And preach the gospel to every creature. Hallelujah. Is a yellow man a creature? Right. Is a black gospel. man a creature? Is a white man a creature? If you're orange, are you a creature? Yes. That's right. The Bible said preach it to who? Every creature. That got everybody. So I don't know what color King James was. Never met him. Don't know. History says he's white. History says he's black. I don't care what color he was. All right. I know that all scriptures are given, uh, given by, by inspiration the inspiration of God. of God. And if I get the scriptures right, the Bible said I'll profit by it. For doctrine. I have my doctrine right if I stick with scripture. For reproof. And then I'll be able to correct it right if I stick with scripture. For correction. What else? For instruction For in instruction righteousness. For instruction in righteousness. That the man, that of, the God man of God may be complete. Thoroughly furnished. Well supplied. Unto all good works. If you stick with scripture, you will have a good word. Knowing this first, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture, no prophecy of the scripture is, is of given. any private interpretation. Did you hear that? Second that means no one took matters in their own hands and just start writing. No black, no brown, no yellow, nobody. For the prophecy came not I in old times. I remember years time. ago, uh, <clears throat> there was a uh, book that I saw that says black people in the Bible. Hmm. Every race is in the Bible. <laughs> That's right. But the re it is sad. The reason why many of these books was written was because the European made it their business to erase yeah. anything, every ethnic group out of the Bible and then made the whole Bible them. them. And I come along and let you know that the Bible is divinely inspired yeah. and it's all about God for the correction of man. Knowing this first. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of no the scripture. Prophecy, no prophecy. No None prophecy. None of the prophets move by their own accord. That's right. Listen at this. That knowing this first. I want you to know it first. That no prophecy, no of, the prophecy of the scripture is of any, is private, of any interpretation. private interpretation. For the prophecy came the prophecy not. prophecy came not. In old time by how? the will of man. Wait a minute. It didn't come how? By the will of man. It didn't come from Cambridge. That's right. Right. They didn't come from Webster, that's right, or Harvard, or Oxford. That's right. Uh, none of the apostles was Harvard men. <laughs> that's right. None of the prophets were Yale men. That's right. These men had a degree that you couldn't get on earth. Glory to God. That's right. And they were divinely inspired. That's right. They were holy men. Holy men. The Bible said, 
holy men of God, God spake, spake as they were moved. As they was what? As they were moved. What moved them? By the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. The black man wasn't moved by a black spirit. No. The white man wasn't moved by a white spirit. That's right. The holy men. Holy Notice men. how God bring it. But holy men of God that's, speak. That's, that's what interests God. And that's, that's what interests me. That's right. Holy men of God speak. They was moved. By the Holy Ghost. Glory to God by the Holy Ghost. Amen.